All right, let's talk about the Great Reset. You say that you've got a nine-point mm. plan for stopping the Great Reset. Yes, I do. So in my book, The Great Reset and the Struggle for Liberty, Unraveling the Global Agenda, I go through the whole nine yards of what this Great Reset is. It is real. It is not a conspiracy theory. Uh, and uh, I tied it down to all of the different elements, inclusive of uh, the World Economic Forum's history, its association with these roundtable groups, also the population ethics that go into this, that is the so-called neo-Malthusian population control, all of that. I treat the climate change uh, science, so-called. And uh, then I have a nine-point plan at the end of the book in which I say what we can do to stop it. Number one is never accept the central bank digital currency. That is the beginning of the end. It closes the totalitarian circle and makes you a complete slave of the state. Right, because at that point they can control our money. If they can, if you could control the money, you could control the person. That's just that's yes. what happened even with COVID, right? When they said you don't, right. if you don't get the jab, you don't have a job, meaning you won't have money. Right. I mean, why do we work? We don't work just for fun. We work for money, and they were controlling the money flow, and of course that then threatened your entire livelihood. So if they can control your money, then they could cut you off. They could say, well, you're not behaving the way that Perfect. we want you to behave. So now we're going to shut down your your money. You can't ha you have the central bank digital currency. You can't even go get cash out out of the bank at that point. So um, exactly. Yeah. So the first thing is to stop CBDCs. What what other things would you say are the most important ways to stop the Great Reset? Well, connected to that is this idea of digital identity or these technologies of digital identity. And we've spoken about this. I, I spoke to you on, on your show about digital yeah. identity and the. Of what this means is a complete database on on every person, not just identification. This is a history, a data a database on every move you make from cradle to grave, inclusive of vaccine status and possibly even like a social credit score, uh, inclusive uh, of uh, carbon footprint tracking and all that. That's connected to the CBDC. This is how they'll determine whether you're allowed to spend money on and on what. Uh, based on this port, uh, this kind of uh, profile that they'll gain, it could even be a political profile included uh, with this uh, digital identity. So you have to reject that. It's uh, you know must find find a way not to buy into the digital identity. And then of course there's um, there's you know some of the premises are basically the premise of the whole thing of the of grand refusal, as I call the nine point plan, is the cut the puppet strings from yourself. You can't control what these globalists uh, are trying to do, what they're, what they're trying to execute, but you can control how, whether they manipulate you or not. And uh, so there are many other things in that, the nine point plan, including um, making sure you don't adopt the transhumanist technologies, which will be implants and, and uh, brain cloud interfaces. All this stuff is real, uh, not science fiction. And so all of that stuff has to be rejected. And then you get into the things like practicing the free market in your own life and being as entrepreneurial as you can. So you're not cancelable. Uh, and uh, luckily, I have, you know, been an entrepreneur enough that I, I'm able to uh, do and say what I want without worrying about cancellation because I have, you know, I've created an entrepreneurial independence. And that's what everybody needs to do yeah. uh, so that you're not controlled by these institutions and the state. I do predict that um, the world will will become more libertarian in time. I, you know, I, as much as things are going in the direction of like the gr the Great Reset and kind of this globalist agenda, I do think that at the same time we're seeing people, you know, just a mass awakening and people are pushing back on that. And they're pushing back right. on the agendas. We're seeing that even with you know on a small scale, like for example with Israel and what's going on with the Palestinians. I mean for. Decades upon decades, we were fed a certain story, and everybody went along with it. Everybody just thought, okay, um, you know, this is this is what's happening. The, the 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 Jews are being terrorized by this other group of people, and that's and we have to protect them, and we have to help them, and that's what we were always taught. But now with the internet, it's just with the ability to have information and fast information, people are able to yeah. see in real time what's actually happening. And then say, wait a minute, this is not what I was told. This is not the story I was told. And I think people are used to that particular sentiment. This is not the story I was told, right? Now I'm seeing some other story. And so I think when it comes to the Great Reset, they could try to shove this on us as much as they want. But people mm -hmm. with information and the way information comes out, 
um, and and the mistrust that people are having with these big agencies and with the globalists. Mm-hmm. I do think people are pushing back, and I think that as they implement them more and more and more, we're going to see a serious pendulum swing where people will say, I just want my freedom. I don't want any of yes. this. I just want my freedom. So I do predict Absolutely, that yeah. libertarianism will become even more popular as these, you know, as like pandemic style controls are put on us in a variety of different ways. People will reject this. I just don't think it's human nature to be controlled by Absolutely. governments who are just making a bunch of money. Making making a bunch of money, making things up, imposing things on us without real, uh, with any decent rationale, and completely again, you know, counter co- counterintuitive and against the evidence. It's just unbelievable. So yeah, there, right. there's a definite resurgence. I think libertarianism is seeing a resurgence. We saw that in uh, in Argentina with Javier Malay, and I think you're going to see it in the United States. Um, this may not be our Javier Malay moment yet, but I think it will come. And I think that it has to come because uh, we're in too much trouble. And yeah. there will be, people will not, you're right, people will not abide by control and censorship and, you know, uh, prohibitions of various types, like on your movement, on your ability to work and on, the, on your use of your own money and so forth. Uh, the totalitarianism never works. It always implodes, and so it will eventually implode. And uh, I hope people are, you know, will survive it, and uh, they'll be there to be a remnant that passes freedom uh, and the free market and uh, liberty to the future. That's the least we can do. That is the least we, yeah. And I, I so I do, I, yeah, you're right. I don't know if this is exactly the Javier Malay moment for the United States just yet, but I don't think we're far from it, actually. Um, you, know, you know, Trump, I think for a lot of people, represents a form of libertarianism. He's not, but mm-hmm. um, just kind of the, yeah, yeah, and he's, he's, he's all about himself. So the reason why he's yeah, against yeah. certain agencies yeah. is because they don't like him. And so he doesn't, right. and, and if they liked him, he might actually like yeah. them back, right? <laughs> like that's the problem, Absolutely. is that he's, he's yeah. all about who likes him and who doesn't like him. And, and so it's right. kind of, it's really flippant. Um, but, but nonetheless, like what he's saying is resonating with a lot of people because a lot of people are starting to, you know, they're, they're feeling like, I don't trust these agencies. I don't trust the government. I don't trust any of this. And so, um, the COVID pandemic shined a big light on that. These endless wars that we're going into, you know, billions of dollars to these other countries while our own country is suffering. People are on to all of this now. So I do think it's fast approaching. I think that there's, but it's a major divide right now. People are going extreme, right, one way yeah. or the other. So it's funny right. how you went from being an extreme in one way, a Marxist, and now you're an extreme yeah. libertarian. But I, aren't we seeing that in in the in the population as well? People are going either Marxist or they're going full on libertarian. That is what's I happening. I think that's what's happening. Yeah, you, you have the statists and Marxists, and you know, other, you know, other types of statists, neocons, doubling and tripling down on their agenda. Right. Uh, even when they're shown to be uh, wrong and crazy. And you have another segment. I think you have uh, liberty rising. I do think you have liberty rising. It will burst through the dam eventually. And I think it's on its way. And isn't it interesting that you were canceled for both reasons, right? You were canceled by kind of the Marxist crowd that that believes mm-hmm. in this, you know, creating this sort of equitable society, even though it is oppressive, but it's equitable, but <laughs> oppressive, right? Um, and you push against that. And then again, on the on the other side, the anti-war side, the minute you become anti-war, suddenly the, the right, so it really, the basically what we're seeing, and we're also seeing the powers that be, we're seeing a lot of rhetoric against Marxism and a lot of rhetoric mm-hmm. against um, those who are speaking out against Israel, and the, a lot of people yeah. are combining that together on social media. I see people saying, oh, it's the yes. Marxists that are all uh, yeah. against Israel, right? And it's not true. Um, no, it's not true. But they're clumping it together, and it's almost a tactic for control. You know, it's almost like yeah. we, they want to stay in the in where we're at, and we're seeing right. the populations wanting to shift, wanting radical change, and the powers that be don't want that radical change. So they're going to hold, they're going to fight tooth and nail. They're going to call us a lot of names. They're going to do a lot of canceling. Yes, they are. You got to hold on. Yes. 
So what is your final message? Why should people vote for you for president? Wreck the regime so you clearly want to wreck it. Um, yes. What is it? What is your final message? Why should people vote for you? Well, I'm trying to bring the message of liberty to the people and to get liber make more libertarians, grow the liberty movement, and increase liberty in people's lives. And that we aim to do not only by trying to dismantle the central government, but by vesting power in people at the local level to refuse the mandates and laws of the federal government when they're unconstitutional, at least. And then, of course, to, um, you know, to, to b begin this process of dismantling the state, to take it, take it apart. And uh, this is necessary, and it is, and only, I'm the only candidate that's talking about wrecking the regime. It is my slogan. Rather than like Javier Millet taking a chainsaw to the state, I believe in taking a wrecking ball to it. And uh, of course, it's a play on my last name. So, and my, uh, my website is wreaktheregime.com. That's R E C the regime.com. And please join in to help us with this movement of decentralized revolution, vesting power in people at the local level, resisting the federal government, and dismantling it as well. All right. Well, we do have the link down below. So if people want to join your campaign or donate to your campaign, they're able to do that to help get this uh, message out and to help, help uh, you know, help wreck the regime, right? Which I definitely, I agree, needs to happen. <laughs> Completely yeah. needs to happen. Thank so thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Kim. All right, guys, that is it for tonight's show. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you being here. Um, we, by the way, we're not going to be around uh, for Christmas Day. So that is Monday and Tuesday. We're taking both of those days off. So the show is, uh, so you won't, you know, you're getting a regular show this week, but then... Next week, we're just not, we're not around for those first two days. But then we'll be back Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday next week. So you can expect more great shows then. But thank you so much for being here. We will be back. Thank you. Have a great night. Um, good night. Bye.